Yo guys, what's up? It is Firepilot here, and today I'm going to be giving you my guide for paratroopers and heroes and generals. So, in my opinion, para is one of the most simple class, much like infantry, but they do have a very big role inside of the game, and they can be a huge game changer. You can literally change the entire course of how a game is played just by having good, competent players playing para. This is all mainly due to the fact that they can get behind enemy lines and just negate all of the walking, driving, etc distance that you need from point to point. This basically makes all the enemy snipers and defenders watching the areas you'd be traveling irrelevant because you're dropping behind them. Now getting into this, the role of the parrot is mainly just for attack. Finding a point that the enemies have and just attacking it is pretty much what you live for. And since you're a full attacker class, that you're not really meant for defending, that's more of the infantry's job. Now there will be some times that yes, you will have to drop on a point that was just yours that the infantry failed to hold, but overall you're mainly meant to just keep dropping up and up and up in the lines past the bad guys basically until you can capture them. You're basically just there to provide a distraction, capture some points, kill as many infantry possible, or whatever you may need to do to help break up the push. A lot of times what people will do is they'll push super strong from the point that they just captured, and since half of your team's focused here and half of your team's focused here, it becomes difficult to fully defend a single point unless you can help kind of disrupt that initial push. And overall you're going to be dealing mostly in close quarters, however there are a few different builds that the para has, and I'll be talking about the general ones later. Now let's get into how to choose a point. Obviously choosing a point to drop on is probably going to be one of the most effective skills you can have in order to win the battle. Try to attack points that are closest to the key objectives regardless of if you're on the attacking or defending side. This can be points such as O1 which is a big key objective that everyone knows or it can be something like E1, D1, etc. The line endings that have half of the enemy or your team's resources. There's a certain priority list that I personally like to follow that I feel lead you to be the most effective in your play. First of all, obviously try to attack key objectives such as O1 and D1 as I mentioned. If you attack O1, you've basically held a point in the game that they can no longer win unless they defeat you with lives. Or if you've captured D1, then you've eliminated half of the enemy team's resources and you should be good. There's not as much pushing and you could totally watch the planes just fall out of the sky and slowly dwindle in numbers. So number two, try to land on points that are currently being contested. Now obviously try to stick to the rule that it's close to one of the key objectives because that'll help you the most, but overall just land on it because it'll help you support your team because you'll be giving them infantry and more people to shoot at basically, along with another body on the capture to help burn the flag. Third, try to land on freshly captured points. Now these are normally ones in the beginning of the battle that just turned red and they're coming towards O1, D1, whatever. Try to land on those because it'll help disrupt the push and honestly it can save you a lot because one para capping the point, even if it only gets to half, you're having multiple infantry going to be coming back. Try to save that point. So you can easily eliminate a full push just by sitting on a point even if you don't capture it. And last, this is the one you probably shouldn't focus on all that much, but the white points. These are points that aren't captured or not contested by either side, and they're just free XP basically. That's why a lot of people fall on them, but honestly landing on these doesn't ever really do your team a lot of good. So try to save these for last. So getting into the build, since this is heroes and generals, there's obviously a probably infinite amount of builds that people could have, so I'm just going to be covering the general ones. So sorry if I miss out on your particular one, if you want to comment down below and say that, feel free, it'll help someone out eventually. For each of these builds, I'm going to be highlighting the freefall badge because it's the most useful badge overall, and this is mainly just because it allows you to pull your shoot manually whenever you want. First things first, the marksman para. This is normally someone who runs with an M1G, G43, SVT, or any other rifle that they feel capable, attacking from a medium-ish range. Now obviously you still want to stay close to the action, so something like an M1G scope will be the most effective to kind of represent this, but you want to stay close while still being able to pick off targets incoming towards the point. This is more of a support for your team kind of deal while you're still attacking a point, so it all depends on really your playstyle. Next you have your tactical para, and this is someone that normally runs around with something like an M1 carbine. Generally, they're just someone who has a lightweight weapon that kind of has a good overall ability, but they really shine because most of the time they'll be carrying something like AT grenades or regular grenades that'll help them. And also, this can be done with pistols, but I see it less frequently used with pistols. If you ever heard the term pistol packing para, it's the same kind of idea. And last, but certainly not least, this is your most common class that you'll most likely see everywhere, your close quarters para, which is just grab a max RPM, SMG, or LMG if you're talking about the Johnson and just try to rush directly into a point, kill as many people as you can, capture that thing, and then wait there just for a minute until you die, then obviously spawn back in your plane. 
Moving on to my tips and tricks, obviously the free fall badge is just the most amazing tip and trick you can ever have. Basically it allows you just to be able to pull your chute manually and wherever you want because there's no drop distance issue. And you can see this in games like PUBG or H1Z1 where the chute deploys and you hit the ground at, I don't know, 500 miles an hour and you can still just get up and walk off. The same idea, you just hit space, the chute will pull and you'll slow down to enough of a stop that you can just land on the ground and walk around. This is really helpful because it does get you closer to the ground, which eliminates a lot of your travel time from your plane to the ground. If you were to hit space out of the plane, you'd probably have to sit there and wait for, I don't know, a good 30, 45 seconds before you'd hit the ground. Whereas this, you can easily just fall almost to where you're about to hit and hit space, and then you can pretty much reduce your travel time to roughly 5 seconds. Now this also allows you to sneak better just because the parachutes are actually really easy to spot and I'm sure you've seen this if you've ever played the game. They're just a giant white object falling from the sky, it's very hard to miss. This is basically going to give your positioning away wherever you're going to land and you'll probably get shot at or at least spotted for the team and your fall won't be as effective. Not to mention when you're falling slowly, you're a very easy target to just snipe out and send you back to the plane. Moving on, we're going to be talking about jumping. Jumping is just a skill you'll learn with practice. Obviously, there's a lot of other things in the game. So the more you play para and the more you jump, the better you'll kind of get a sense of awareness. But for the newbies, I'll just give you a basic outline. So you selected a point and you're spawned in, and a text on the screen will appear somewhere saying, uh, nearing drop zone, X amount of meters. This is just going to the next drop zone that's selected on the map. For somebody, somewhere, it doesn't really matter. But you're going to be dropping there. You're not going to be landing on the point you chose. Wait for it to say nearing chosen drop zone, and that's the one that you've selected in your respawn menu that you actually want to land on. There's a, just a little bit of a difference in text but it's a big difference when you get into the actual game because you could be landing on the opposite end of the map. As soon as you do see the nearing chosen drop zone however, wait for the text to disappear for about half a second and then jump from your plane. Most times this will land you directly on top of the point you want it to land on so you can get right into the action but obviously waiting just a little bit longer or not waiting as long will allow you to land near the point which is also just as important because it can help you get in while not falling directly on top of everyone. Here's just a little tip I've learned, if you hold still while you hit the ground you'll avoid that stupid ass roll that they added in and you won't have to uh, just hit the ground, get back up, do your stupid roll and look around for your target. It just eliminates a lot of the finding for targets and stuff that can actually get you killed many times. And my last tip is just generally stay on the point until you die and then go back in your airplane. Now this helps a lot because you are defending to an extent but you're still being a paratrooper so I guess if you wanted to keep attacking you're more than welcome but a lot of times just staying in the point will help your team out enough. So instead of just f 11 or run out and get shot by something try to just stay alive as long as you possibly can and then get back up in your plane. Now the rest of the things that you need to know will probably be learned through playing. That's all I can really recommend. Just play a lot and you'll eventually get the hang of things that you don't know now. Now just as a recap because I know these videos get a little bit of confusion. So I am confusion. Now just to recap because I know these videos can get a little bit confusing. The para's role is just to attack and not necessarily to defend. You're there to cause a distraction and defeat the pushes while not necessarily defending points and helping in that regard. The objectives should be prioritized with the priority list, so you should go for key objectives first, contested objectives second, freshly captured objectives third, and not capture objectives last. Find the best build for your playstyle and that suits you the best, and remember that the freefall badge allows you to pull your shoot as low as possible which makes it one of the most important badges. Wait for the chosen drop zone text to appear, not just the regular drop zone, the chosen drop zone, and then jump about half a second after the text vanishes to land right on the point. And just please stay as long as you possibly can before you get back up in your plane. Anyways guys, this has been my cover of the para, so if you'd like to add anything that you feel I've missed or anything, please comment down below. It'll help me and new players alike just as much, so please do that. And as always, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.